Hello everybody, this is Conquering History Games and welcome back to the second live stream as we raise funds for the SSD for the computer. And a uh, perfect example of why I need one, I'm sorry that I started a little bit late, uh, because I was moving some things around, deleting some things to make sure that there actually was room for me to record today's live stream on my current hard drives. If I was to have an SSD, of course it would only be it would be for the usage of the channel. As I've said multiple times during this fundraiser, uh, I don't need an SSD. I don't meaning in the sense like I'm not going to starve. This is funds are not for like my rent money or the internet or anything. Anything you donate is going immediately back into the channel in the form of an SSD. So I can put games on it. I can put software on it. Everything's going to perform better. I'm going to be able to bring you higher quality videos, edit faster, um, and get more stuff out quicker. Uh, so let's give a couple minutes for everybody to get in. Uh, and you know, obviously, if I have like all my games on an SSD, that means stuff that I don't need an SSD for, like just storing an already completed video or, or something like that. Uh, I could I could move move that, keep that stuff on the hard drive, and move all the games off of that, off of the SSD. Okay, let me make sure. I'm just trying to make sure both streams are working. Uh, okay, the Twitch stream looks good. Let's, of course, check in on the, check in on the YouTube one. Okay. How's my audio, everybody? <clears throat> also, so this is kind of a new thing. I've never seen this on a stream before, but I'm using it myself. Uh, but I used it yesterday. We've got the tip jar in the, or the tip cognac glass, I should say, in the bottom right, that if you donate, uh, it will, it will uh, fill it up with coins. Also, if anybody subscribes during the stream, that's fun too. Let's actually just check something here real quick. Eh, uh, okay. I gotta close that. All right. So again, we're just giving, we're just waiting a couple minutes so people can get in. And in fact, you know what? I should probably get some water now while we wait. Okay. How's everybody doing today? <clears throat> We're going to be continuing the Iran one that I started yesterday. Oh yeah, so let me just show you also how the tip jar works. So basically, if somebody subscribes during the stream, then there will uh, be little a little logo of mine, a little circle with my logo on it that'll drop into the jar. And then the coins represent uh, basically donations. Bronze are for smaller donations, silver is for a little bit more. I think to get the silver you need it's at like at least three dollars. And then gold is when it's uh, I think I think gold is 20, 20 units of whatever the currency that's being donated is. But we had a good run yesterday. We got to 53.99% of the way towards our goal. $97.18 97 was raised. But I think that we're good. Now, just one more thing before we get started here for real. Oh, good morning, Samuel. Good morning to you, too. One, thing, one more thing before we get started here for real. Uh, yesterday was a super long stream. I'm not going to be able to do that again today. But what I am going to do is I'm going to stream a little bit now. Probably for at least two hours. I'm guaranteeing at least two hours of streaming. And then I've got some things I have to do. Um, you know, it is the holidays. There's a lot of stuff. Uh, but like personal errands. And uh, and also I want to record some other things that are not live stream material. And then I'm going to pick it back up again this afternoon. Uh, so look forward to that. So I think we can go ahead and jump in. So uh, this is the Iran game I was doing uh, where I, we last left off. I had, yeah, I had just beaten the, yeah, I just defeated the Afghanis. And I was debating 
if I wanted to I can't go for Azerbaijan okay so do I want to then go after the Turkestan Khanate incidentally do I get cores on any of this no they're only colony states what lame that's not right Let's see it could only take me 35 days to get something on Tajikistan I could go for Armenia oh and by the way yeah I just wanted to show you how the the this works <laughs> So this would be an example of somebody tipping into the cognac jar. Uh, the the um, the little scroll should go across. Uh, <laughs> I did not actually donate forty two dollars to myself. I just clicked the tet the like the example shown. But yeah, I see because so that's forty two dollars. So just a bunch of gold is going into there. There actually was a fair amount of gold in there yesterday. I don't know what happened when I started it up this morning. I guess they broke it down into smaller denominations or something very strange. Uh, but that's what it'll look like when people donate. And you might have also noticed that that does not contribute to the money bar. The super chat, um, I'm not entirely, entirely sure why, but the super chat only seems to be directly connected to Twitch donations and Streamlab donations. So what I'm doing is when people donate through super chat, I'm going to write it down. And then I'll, every like hour or so, I'm going to update it. All right, integrate Herat. Uh, this will give me a core here. It's 1.62 million, why not? All right, so for 200 days, we're gonna suffer from some things. Uh, maybe not, maybe we can wait on the coring, uh, but we're, we're finishing up the mandatory education. We should maybe go to the research slot. <sighs> can we go after Armenia? Armenia is not guaranteed by anybody. Oh, she looks weird. Her face is kind of like flat, makes her look alien. 185 days. Yeah, let's do it. So the goal here uh, for Iran, what we're going to try to do is just take everything that we can via um, annexation of Iran. Continue the military occupation. Yeah. Uh, the goal here is to take everything that we have annex war goals on. Good morning, Nitra Game. Good to see you. Good morning to everybody in the chat. Uh, so we still have to get our industry up and running. It's nowhere near where it needs to be. So, hmm. 18. Or is this the same template twice? Huh. That's weird. Well, let's move this up. Okay, we got a lot here to do. We could switch over to War Economy, but I think we're not going to really be able to do that for a while. So we could instead do, we got the mil. oh yeah, I know the military intelligence guys are good. Can I join or make a faction? Yes, I can. Also, I decided that I'm not going to do the thing where I'm not answering questions unless it's my donators that I did yesterday. Uh, I will answer anybody's questions that they have. Because uh, I find it drives good conversation. Uh, okay. Working on that. We got this and this. Do we need the motorized maybe for the field hospitals? No. You know what? Let's pick up radio because we're going to definitely need that at some point. And you know what? The hell with it. Let's just... Ah, you see, it's not the problem. It's not the 50 political power. It's that I'm going to lose stability, lose political power gain. It's going to cost me consumer good factories, all that stuff. That's the reason why I don't really want to do this. Also, we don't need to trade for tungsten anymore since we have taken Afghanistan or part of greater Iran, as I should say. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, gosh, maybe we should go after Turk Turkestan. They've got 11 divisions. I probably could just take the 35-day focus, and I'm sure we can take the mountain time. Uh, although Russia's already doing its Central Asia direction. So this is where things get really tricky. The good news is, Russia no longer makes an alliance with Germany under any circumstances, so maybe we could figure something out. Ottomans are going to have to be a top priority, though. How long until the infantry equipment is fixed? 216 days. Gosh, that's brutal. Try to come up here. Absolutely brutal. They're just now doing the Cairo Pact with Egypt, so then uh, we're going to have some... Hey, the Woodstock, good to see you. 
Will Russia declare on you if you own the parts they get in their focuses? I don't know, but there's no time anyway because they're already doing Central Asian direction. Maybe if I had been there before. Also, uh, I was doing this before when I did the stream. Uh, if anybody wants me to look at any particular country's leaders, you know, just say, like, Finland or something. Are we sure this one's a girl? Nope, those are boobs. Yeah, that's definitely a girl. Uh, but, you know, just let me know. I think we already went through and looked at all the American break-off states. Looks like MacArthur's already dead. Uh, so we'll also have to fight the Entente at some point. Uh, though we should probably time that out so that it's with whoever wins the war, the American Civil War, will uh, beat the Commonwealth. I'm trying to remember who I bet on. I want to say it was the American Union state. Indochina? Indochina uh, did not break away, interestingly enough. Socialist Republic of Italy? Sure. Oh, she looks very upset. Okay. So we could go for the liberation of Tajikistan... But I just don't think we're going to have time to do it. <sighs> you know what? Let's try. We'll, we'll go for it. The Tajik people are our brethren, our flesh and blood. Though the Khan of Turkestan has ironic influence in his rule, it's still not enough to warrant the safety of our brothers in Tajikistan. We must act. So, you know, there's a... You know, eight more factories, it'd be 50% more than I have now. So then which is going to finish first, this or Armenia? Armenia is going to be on the 22nd. Okay, so we got a lot of time over there. So we got to focus on Turkestan. Let's find out. Let's find out what Russia does if I take this. Somebody wants to see Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. There's Mingdong the third. The lowly bait. Yeah, and it's Kirel up here in uh, in Russia. They've got 12 divisions. We're about neck and neck at the moment. Hawaii just joined the Entente. Let's try to get you guys right here. Try to smother them. Uh, we could... Do we want construction? It's 37. Uh, no. Let's... Ah, oh, jeez. Now the land, the, the land doctrine is just so horrific. The, the how long it takes. No, no, we can't do that. I can't afford it. Maybe after Tajikistan. Who's the hottest waifu in this mod, mates? Well, that's in the eye of the beholder. There's a couple that look very real. Like, uh, not like, not like this thing. Like Armenia looks like this strange elfish creature, but. I don't remember where they were, but there was a couple I thought, that's barely anime. <laughs> There's Kolchak, <laughs> the sailor. Is that supposed to be his hair? What is that? Looks like a big bow or something. Okay. Uh, so, liberation of Tajikistan is going to begin now. Oh boy. Here we go. So let's... Okay, once we declare the war, are we able to switch to war economy? Nice. Okay, so we want that. And as long as we're here, let's also switch to the extensive conscription. Try to do a force attack right here. Let's try to get a... Let's see, want me to see Germany, Stasia? Helmuth von Mucke. There she is, with the pink hair and the purple eyes. Okay, Tehran. It's going to take 70 days, but I need that extra research slot bad. I want it bad, so bad. I want it so bad. Can we do, can we do this, maybe? Hold, and then you come this way. How, bi how many men do they have in the field? Again, it's about neck and neck. Maybe we should try to bait them out. Oh, Chile did its counter-revolution. Jeez, those are... Talk about melons. That looks like it hurts. Oh, uh, man. I think we're just going to need to do this manually for the most part. 
yeah, th this this is a bad idea because this is where their actual infantry is. So let's just stop that and switch these over to this template, which is gonna put me short on a couple of things. Hmm. Here we go. You, you attack south. Go south. Take the bait. Take the bait. <sighs> He's not taking the bait. I'm gonna take a year to fix my uh, problems. Oh, who just took the RDP? Just took power here in Bulgaria. Nice eye patch. Wow. <laughs> Boris the third. So remember that you will receive alerts anytime you subscribe to the channel. If you donate, if you do a super chat, uh, if you become a sponsor, and what else was there that was going to trigger an alert? I think that was those. Yeah, those four things. Hmm. Hmm. Try this. Cairo Pact is being formed. Hey, the Libya thing worked out. He's joining us. There's not very many areas where we can attack from multiple areas. There's this... Problem is, is we have here the... Um... Oh, somebody did something. I heard the alert. Uh, over here, we've got the... It's over a river into hills. Random Dodo 21 just subscribed. So yeah, now if you look at the tip jar, as you can see, it drops a little logo into the jar because I have a new subscriber. Look, why doesn't he attack? Damn! This clown. Really annoying. Uh, now, I don't know why the white corners show up on my logo. I, I was trying to play with it. Uh, earlier and it just even when it, like even when I put a transparent logo it still gets the white corners so it's not a perfect circle which is really annoying I don't know why it happens who am I gonna play first in the China update probably Feng Tian I love Feng Tian even in even incomplete Feng Tian is one of the best focus trees in the game it's amazing I love it I love it I love it problem is they never break off from Japan. I think that's still bugged. Uh, what if I did this? Oh, that kind of works. You know, let's try to come. have you come over here and assist. Gosh, there's some real lag going on here. It's only 1937. But that's Kaiserreich for you. It ebbs and flows. It just depends on how many wars are going on at once. So, like, we've got this one over here in the Balkans happening. There we go. Now the Cavs taking the bait. Their organization is dropping faster. There we go. Yeah, get out there. You saw what you once saw Feng Tian declare independence? That must have been nice. Um, <clears throat> so, we got the we got the extra research slot now. Let's grab the delay. Now, um, I really have to do something about the land doctrine stuff. Uh... Between Kaiserreich and Equestria at War, which is better at optimization? Well, that's tough to say because Equestria at War is much smaller, meaning the size of their world. But I think it was two updates ago, um, meaning I should say hot fixes. I don't know what Yard did, but when I would throw it on five speed, just it was flying it was flying through equestria at war ever since like two hot fixes ago so i don't know what he did but it is crazy i had to, i had to stop playing on five speed sometimes uh because it was just going way too fast uh hmm expansion of army funding 50 percent research 
Modify. This is going to give me the land auction research fix. I can't do this because I'm not socialist. So I could either... Do I want the better... Do I want more organization? Or do I want the planning speed? I think organization is what I want to do because it's going to stack with my mobile warfare stuff. So we're going to do Austro-Iranian cooperation. Military's in a horrendous strait. Blah, blah, blah. Let's go. Okay. Hmm. What about government reforms? Hmm. We gotta do something about the unruly cons, too. Where's that one here? No, disorganized. Here it is. It hurts with my consumer goods and war supports, but it's not that big a deal, really. Okay, you, you stop. And we're going to last stand. Yeah, dang it. Look, they're retreating. They're not even committing. They won't put their head in the noose. Oh, I should have just waited for Turkestan. Actually, wait. We might be able to counterattack here. Wait, let's wait for this infantry division to move through. Move, 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 move. Oh, yep. Over here, too. Okay, what's next? Uh, we need... Better infantry stuff. Okay. So we're going to try to come up here to the Caucasus. See, Turkestan's kind of hard to uh, capitulate. They got a lot of area to cover. And none of the victory points mean too much on their own. Okay. All right, Russia just declared on them. Well, this is gonna be easier now. <laughs> yeah, the the you're you're right, uh, Dithy Ram. The performance of Equestria at War will be better judged when the third continent has been added. You are correct. You're gonna support the Arab rebels. Okay, it's just about to start. We're only 21 days away, so hopefully Russia will distract enough. We just do the integration already. No, no, we're we're already we're still mobilizing. We don't need another core right now. What's new on the third continent? Uh, I think it's gonna be the zebra continent. Basically, it's Africa. Um, I don't know if they're actually going to incorporate Saddle Arabia or if it's just a joke. We will see. Let's, let's move a little faster now. A little bit faster now. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh definitely counterattack opportunity here. Beijing has fallen already. Dang, that was quick. And uh, we're about to get our war goal on Armenia as well. So there's a lot going on right now. Portugal just joined the Entente. 38, good to know. Yes, Saddle Arabia. That's what it's called. Okay, see, I'm cutting off. I'm cutting off Russia from getting too far. Oh, dang it, they're cutting me off, though. Get out of my way. Oh, my gosh. So sorry about that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. But uh, usually I try to keep my phone on silent. Oh, you know, everybody's trying to get a hold of me. Oh, Yemen just declared. Everybody's getting in on this. Okay, okay, we just need to get Turkestan. Yeah, uh, they told me the dragons are getting a focus tree sometime. I'm sure they will. Uh, it's, uh, it's my understanding the main thing is they're arguing about what the racial techs are going to be. Because they, because it's a very small island the dragons are on. So the concept they seem to be going for is, do you like? They're gonna have low population, but they're also freaking dragons. So like, should they have super overpowered special forces as a result of it to kind of 
even that out. Go watch the show. I have seen the show. I am behind, though. I have not seen any of season eight, nor have I seen... I haven't seen season eight. I haven't seen the movie. Um... Wait, why did I not get called into the war? Did I not get invited? You bastards. I want to kill the Ottomans too. I don't think they invited me. Uh, but yeah, so I've seen the show, but I'm behind. Uh, dang, 15%. Um, sh yikes. 15% uh, stability is pretty harsh. The hell with it. The hell with it, we're taking it. Western expansion. Oh, here we go. It's a decision. Okay, well, let's wait until the Ottomans get their head in that noose. Uh, gosh, my, my army's so small! Ah! We might... You know what? I think we might do a little bit of editing of this template here. Maybe... So, what, what would that do? Uh-huh. Yep. That's the way to go. No, I think boy, I'm taking questions from me. Have I tried the Elder King CK2 mod? I don't think I've even heard of that. So, no. I have not tried it. What is it? Okay, why are we not attacking? Okay. Come on. Alright, army funding has been expanded a little bit. Uh, I don't need the mandatory service. I could do that anytime. Literate population, women's rights. Ah, gosh, there's so much garbage I gotta fix. Oh, Elder Scrolls? See, I don't know Elder Scrolls. I've never, I've never played it, so I don't know too much about it. I did find a CK2 um, mod recently that's CK2 in space, and as many of you know... Uh, nobody really watches my Stellaris games, although I need to, never mind, that's one of the things I need to do today. Is there an anime Stalin? No. Uh, there's Baraya here. Well, like, he's a minister, but he, um, he doesn't have an anime face. Anyway, uh, so, it's basically, it's CK2, but with space. So, maybe that's what I need to get to get my subscribers into space-related things. We'll have to see. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, these damn mountains. It's a mountain and a river. Maybe I should just get paratroopers. It's going to take so long, though. 170... Actually, 170 days is not so bad. I've definitely seen worse. Uh, it doesn't look... Yeah, it doesn't look like the Ottomans are keeping anybody on my borders, which is good. It's Beria. Beria. It's, it's a monster is what it is. He's an animal! Uh, no matter, Executor, I've already got my next campaign planned uh, for CK2. I'm actually technically not done with the Reconquista. I think I have a couple of more episodes to go, and I want to take care of the Aztecs. Yeah, my Solaris World Creations, I need to do, I think, five more. I've got the next three, actually the next four that I'm going to make in mind. And then... Um, I was talking with somebody on my Discord, and he, he gave me an idea about, like, another, another one that I could go for. Uh, so I've got at least, f yeah, I want to say I've got a five more sieves I want to make. Actually, I guess I can tell you guys them here. There's only, like, 37 of you. But I'm going to make three more that are based on the works of Robert Heinlein. One is going to be my personal favorite custom sieve I've ever made, which is uh, uh, the Howard families from Methuselah's Children. Uh, I don't think they're gonna win. I think they're gonna get their ass kicked. Uh, they're 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 just not built for warfare. But from a role playing perspective, I really like them. I'm also gonna make the Jokarian Religious Front, which is uh, one of the alien species that they ran into during their space travels in Methuselah's Children. And the other one I'm gonna make is called the Little Ones, which are like also known as the Dog People. Or but like they don't look like dogs. They're just these weird, freakish looking furry creatures. So I'm gonna make those. 
Um, so that's three of them. The fourth one I'm going to make is one based on the... Hey, Zoriaster and Faith. The fourth one I'm going to make is based on the Celestial Dragons and the World Government from One Piece. Uh, that one is going to have... Oh, cool, we're done. Uh, so, except they're going to be the parrots. And uh, then... Hold on a second. Okay, cool. We got to bypass those. And then the fifth one is... Um, well, I need to work on it because I'm working on that with somebody. Uh, but they may or may not be space elves. We're working on it. Okay, so I think next we need... It's already 38. Improved infantry equipment, perhaps? Or no, 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 no. Let's get the computing machine. All right, annexation of Armenia... Hurrah! After fierce fighting in the Caucasus, we have conquered and annexed Armenia. The Armenian army has surrendered and the territory is under our control, but the people are still resistant, but soon they will submit. I guess eventually it'll just tell me I got a core. Uh, okay. How bad's the infantry equipment deficit? Oh, it's not bad at all. Okay, let's, uh, let's build more then. Of these. How many can I make? Four. Well, let's, let's make them as quickly as possible. <laughs> Hey, thank you very much, Nitra Game. Where's my... Oh, shoot. Where's my notebook I was writing everybody's donations on? <laughs> the finally finishing my paper and getting to watch the stream donation. <laughs> I do appreciate that. Wait, was there not an alert? There it is. Okay, I just heard it. I just heard the alert noise. I gotta do something about that delay. I don't, I'm not sure what causes it, but it's really annoying me. Uh, okay, we got that. Um... We want all these new ones to pop up. Kurdistan, now that's a country I gotta play sometime. Do a world conquest, piss everybody off. Uh, okay, so I had a pin. Okay, where's my, whatever. Okay, all right, uh, Nitra game. Remember, you can now name an army or something if you want. Five real. Hmm. But I'm glad people are enjoying the uh, the space things. Ryan Fitzgerald coming in with the... Uh, is that a euro? <laughs> I should know what a euro is. I've spent euros. Oh, but thank you very much. Buy a Kit Kat on me. Well, it's all going to the SSD. But I appreciate that. Ryan... Remember, you can buy. You can name. I can name a general after you or something now. Yes to what? Uh, Etch et Shalu, you got to remember. There's a slight delay, and I'm talking a lot. So when you just tell me yes, I have no idea what you're talking about. You got to be detailed. All right. Here we go. Yeah, so, uh, so that, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the Euro sign. I like the Euros. All the buildings and stuff that are on them. I have a little one I got in Ireland with the, with the, with the harp on it. I keep it as a sort of souvenir. Okay, but I think what we need to do is just, as soon as we can crank these out, we will, uh, we will attack. Even if they're not, like, yeah. Okay, your army's gonna be Nitra Games Immortals. All right, well, we're gonna put those here then. Nitra Games, whoops. Immortals. Okay. Get the Xerxes flow back, bring in sexy back to Persia. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I just thought I probably should have my cavalry further south so we could try to rush Adana. Oh, yeah. Do I watch the Stellaris Dev Clash on the Paradox channel? You know, what's the ironic thing about being a YouTuber is, is the more you do it, the less time you actually have to watch other people. One, one series I want to watch is uh, something by Hadrian Gaming. I want to watch his Stellaris campaign that he's got going on. 
With having a pool of up-to-date officers at our disposal, we can begin to train our officers ourselves without the need of being too reliant on foreign help. So now our, um, yeah, the disorganized military. So we still have bad planning speed and additional land doctrine bonus, but we got the rest of the stuff back. Dev clash was great. <laughs> I have to take you guys' word for it. All right. Okay, we're ready to go. Uh-oh, one of the kingdoms just capitulated. So yeah, we gotta go. We gotta go! The Ottomans are weak. Recently, Egypt has declared war on the Ottoman Empire. The Ottomans have been dominating the Middle East for centuries, and now it is our moment to seek revenge. They have been showing weakness since even before the beginning of the First Weltkrieg, and now it is our time to put an end to the sick man that is the Ottomans. Start letting me know now what you think the borders should be. I know people are going to complain no matter what, but just as that heads up... Okay, go, 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 go. Oh, the Templin Institute, I've seen them. Is Fuhrer Reich fun? Fun's in the eye of the beholder. That's what I always tell people. That's always my go-to answer. But you know, Fuhrer Reich is still on its first, um, its first iteration. But I think they're putting China in in the next one, as well as some other things. But I get released with, what, 26 countries? That's pretty damn good. And everybody was just bitching and moaning that it wasn't Führerreich on its first... I mean, it wasn't Kaiserreich on its first day. Kaiserreich wasn't Kaiserreich on its first day. Hmm... Yeah, Thick Boy's questions do come across like he's, uh, he has homework and he needs me to do it for him. <laughs> That's really true. Okay. And, uh, Ryan Fitzgerald, you still haven't told me what you want me to name after you. Do you want a fleet named after you, or, or what? You gotta let me know. Okay, like this doesn't, these two need to do not need to be fighting. How many divisions do the Ottomans have? 43, possibly. Yeah, we got to get some encirclements happening. Yes, they're, they're going to still have Beirut to evacuate from, but it should help. Actually, you know, we're, we're going to try to take Beirut. I don't know if we can, but we're going to try. Sometimes end of the year questions can be hard. I understand. Damn, I remember I once... Okay, so I sometimes do papers for pay uh, to, like, make some income on the side if I don't have a particularly hard semester going on. And so um, a couple years ago, this girl tells me, hey, uh, I'm working... Uh, we had a class together, and she says, can you help me with my homework in the classics? And then we, we, we set a deal on... I think it was, like, $10 a page or something. But... Or, like, it was going to be kind of negotiable, but I, I start doing the homework, and I'm looking at this final, and it was a final, like, you just... The concept was like it, it wasn't a final in the sense of uh, of how do I say it like it wasn't a sit down exam like they were assigned the papers and they just had to come in on the day of the final and uh, turn it in and then they were gonna have like a short little thing but nothing too serious uh, and I'm looking at these questions she was getting and it was a classics class and I was thinking each one of these essay topics could have, like, a fucking book written about it. <laughs> like, like uh, there was things about, like, Epicurus and, um, like, uh, who wrote, um... Who was it? There was questions about, like, Plato's Republic, um, Lucretius's On the Nature of Things, and... And eventually I told her, like, so she gives me, like, a week beforehand, and, and eventually, I've, I've been working on it for three days, and I tell her, look, I can't finish all this. I don't know how your professor expected anybody to finish all of this, unless this was the only class they were taking. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to divide up the work, and you just pay me for what does get done. Come on, we gotta get down to Beirut. 
You guys are killing me. Serbia just capitulated. Oh, wow, look at Hungary go! Other oh, part of the, uh, the, the Austrians. <laughs> All right. Yeah, but what you have to understand is, because uh, I noticed you guys are now talking about the uh, the Industrial Revolution, is when you get asked a question that's really broad, you um you need to understand that it's probably your professor is just trying to see that you understand the concept and 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 don't doesn't really want you to go into a ton of detail it's more that they want to check to see how well you can argue a point so for example i was once taking a class on um law and society and the professor would kind of do um questions that were sort of fun in quotation marks like she'd like in like in the sense that it was a question that was asked in a way that's allowing us to be a little bit creative um but it's also checking that we actually know what the hell we're talking about so we so for example um i got asked a question about John Marshall, who was uh, not the first Supreme Court Justice. I want to make that clear. He was not the first Supreme Court Justice. I think he was the fourth, but he was certainly the most influential of the earliest. earliest. Um, anyway, so so she, she, she had a, we were taking our essay and there was a series of questions on John Marshall, basically saying, who was he? Give a brief description of his life. Uh, how did he end up on the um, uh, okay wait hold, hold, hold on a second I just got a, a message uh, alright cool so we've taken Constantine Constantinople it's one no more Istanbul it's Constantinople do, 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 Constantinople and where's the capital it's Sam the capital of Sam Anyway, so so one of the questions, so th there was a series of questions about John Marshall, and then it says, finally, at the end of your essay, write, um, uh, write who you you think John Marshall would vote with, like you know the left leaning side, the right leaning side, if he was on the Supreme Court today, and provide evidence. And so then when we got that um, paper back, the professor she says, look, there was no right answer to that section. I didn't care if you said he was going to vote with, like, Clarence Thomas or if he was going to vote with Sonia Sotomayor or whoever. I didn't care what you said. I cared if you gave me evidence, like if you made an argument, and I guess some people didn't. If you just went, well, uh, John Marshall was a Federalist and um, a lot of members of the Supreme Court are members of the... Uh, Federalist society, so obviously he would have voted for them, with them. Eh, wrong. <laughs> oh, jeez, these cavalrymen. We're having we're having some problems out here. We are having some problems. We gotta get Beirut. Gosh, if we can get Beirut, the war's over. We just gotta cut off their supply to everybody up. Everyone up here's supply. Istanbul, it's Constantinople. Da, 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 da. Syndicalists in the Baratia commune. Okay. Hmm. Okay, we could study. Oh, we'll just finally get rid of the disorganized if we come down here. That's right. Did, did they patch that in? I don't remember that. Hmm. Who won the Battle of Jutland and why? I could get, I could really get into that actually, if you want me to. I wrote a whole paper on um, uh, the naval combat of World War One this semester. I could just read it. <laughs> Tell you what, if somebody donates at least two dollars, I will, uh, or if I get the equivalent of two dollars, just say it's for the World War One paper. I will read my entire World War One paper during this stream. I think it's about four pages. Hmm, I don't remember what these things do, so that's why I'm a little bit, uh, doing... Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. No, Ryan, I did not see, uh, I did not see that. Okay. Alright, I'll name these guys, because these are my Mosul ones. Okay, Ryan Fitz... 
Ryan Fitzgerald's Cossacks. Yeah, sorry about that. I did. I didn't see it. Uh, whoops, I misspelled your name. Dang it. Fitzgerald. <laughs> no, the only naval combat of World War One was not the Battle of Jutland. That is not true. And I'm not just talking about isolated submarine attacks either. But yeah, that's the that's the goal now. Two dollars, and I'll read my entire campaign, my entire uh, World War One naval combat thing. Oh yeah, two point twenty nine euro. Okay, hold on a sec, hold on a sec. I'm gonna be right back. Here's what we're gonna do. So I need to set that up. I need to pull the paper up. We're gonna take like a five minute intermission. Okay. Um, so, yeah, just just look at this map and en enjoy it. I'll be right back. Damn it, where's my shit? There. Okay, I was running out to the car for something. God damn, why is it so fucking cold? Why the hell do I live in the desert if it's gonna be cold? Woo! Yikes. Okay, so, wait a minute. All right, so another 2.29 euro. All right. Woo! Um, all right, so hold on, there's just one more thing I gotta do. Oh, I'm so sorry I was muted. Uh, okay. <laughs> you guys should be able to hear me now. Uh, right? Can you guys hear me? All right. How many pages is this thing? All right. Now, of course, you'll have to forgive me. This isn't, you know... This is a paper. I only had a couple of days to write it. But it's about four pages. 
All right, let me just set up some things here. And, uh, okay, we want that. And I need to pick up, which one do I want to pick up? We already rushed this. I don't need the extensive conscription, not at all. Study of the Veldkrieg. Is any of the disorganized military, the planning speed's kind of hurting me, but it's actually not that big a deal. Let's let's find out what these events do, because I don't remember, even though I already did a Persia guide. I don't remember, because I did that like months and months ago. Oh, this is the dude's wealth. Wait, okay, okay. I'm, I'm sort of remembering this stuff. Um, all right. Black Monday recovery. Yeah, yeah, I'm working on it. Okay, so reading hype. Uh, let me slow this down so I can cut back and forth with my eyes. Um, okay. So you better have my references right. Okay, so the main secondary source, because, you know, this is it is actually important to know what people are getting their shit from. Um, my main secondary source that I used for this paper was Hugh Strachan. Uh, now, if you don't know who he is, he's basically written the encyclopedia of World War One. He's got it's super fucking thick books. Okay, he's I think I think he'll be acceptable for everybody. Nice, we got the cutoff. We're almost in Beirut. Let me just get to Beirut. Let me just ah, oh, come on. And I don't I don't even want to take Sam. I want to keep everything. Um, uh, 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 you know, I want to keep it here so that the attrition hurts everybody up here. Okay, so let me get started. As the First World War raged across the continent of Europe, a different kind of war was being fought on the North Sea. The United Kingdom's Navy had begun a blockade of Germany in 1914, shutting them off from access to much-needed food imports. Both nations had engaged in an arms race in the years leading up to the war. However, they now each had to develop the best way to defeat the other's fleet without causing serious damage to their own. Though the Germans generally would learn better naval lessons in their attempts to break the British blockade and decisively defeat their fleet, British naval intelligence and their superior resources would prove to be too much for the Germans to overcome. The primary problem the German high seas fleet faced was how to defeat the numer numerically superior British Royal Navy. Uh, the answer to this problem was Kleinkrieg, a strategy meant to break down that numerical advantage over time by usage of non-direct confrontation such as mines and coastal batteries. However, for Klein Craig to be effective required the British Navy to use a traditional blockade close to the German coast. Instead, the British used a distance blockade that had their fleet block the English Channel and the 155 mile opening in the North Sea. Hey, go Uruguay, and it's Ramadan. So nice, I'm gonna get stability every year. Okay, back to the paper. Um, some British officers saw the blockade as a means of drawing out the German Navy for a decisive battle in the tradition of Trafalgar. Instead, the capital ships... God damn. Instead, the capital ships of both nations would be mostly held back in their respective harbors, a situation which that favored the British who only had to maintain the blockade to keep an advantage. Let's get these down here. Okay. In addition to their other advantages, the British had access to all German naval communication codes within months of the war's outbreak. The Germans relied on wireless radio much more than the British, and with access to their codes, the British could now know where the German ships would be and win, creating opportunities for victory. Yet there was the issue of using this acquired intelligence without compromising security which led to British commanders often being given instructions without reasons why. British radio silence, another security measure, required the usage of flag signals, which would become difficult to read amid the smoke of battle or in inclement weather. These measures helped lead to the sinking of the Brit German ship Blücher in January 1915 following the Battle of Dogger Bank. However, the British also lost the chance at a greater victory due to their communications issues. Each navy took different lessons from the early naval battles of the war. Jack Fisher, the first sea lord of Britain, shifted his naval philosophy from one based on the heavy dreadnought to an emphasis on battle cruisers due to the former's vulnerability to torpedoes. The idea behind this was that cruisers would provide the firepower 
of a dreadnought while being faster as well. <clears throat> this came at the expense of ship armor. This, uh... Uh, this led to two problems on the British ships. Decreasing deck armor made them more vulnerable to fire from enemy ships. This weakness was supposed to be mitigated by the cruiser's speed and by engaging from a greater range. The increased speed and range when uh, in battle led to a plummet in the quality of gunnery. The British cruisers Invincible and Inflexible at the Battle of the Falklands, quote, achieved one hit per gun every 75 minutes and took five hours and 1,174 shells to sink two inferior vessels. Uh, measures were taken to increase the volume of fire after this battle. Wait a second. Measures were taken to increase the volume of fire after this battle, um, in, uh, including keeping charges, and now this is important, including keeping charges inside the gun turrets and leaving the door to the magazines open. There were they, these were circumventing established navy established safety methods in the name of firing rounds as quickly as possible. Hold on a sec. How fucking will they just capitulate already? The Germans developed in an opposite direction. After Dogger Bank, they did not send ships out against the British for almost a year and a half. Uh, in the interim, they emphasized quality gunnery over quantity, even going so far as to deliberately restrict the ammunition available to each gun turret. They also thickened their ship's armor and implemented additional explosion prevention precautions. The disparity in German and British methods was shown in the Battle of Jutland in May 1916. When the two fleets engaged, the Germans were the more accurate fleet. The British cruiser Indefatigable would blow up in a matter of seconds, uh, after being hit, a result of taking fire on a gun turret which ignited its charges and resulted in the death of almost its entire crew. The differences in German and British methods became tragically ironic with the fate of the Invincible, whose inaccurate gunnery at Dogger Bank had spurred the changes in munition storage, being destroyed in the same way as the Indefatigable. Despite these successes, Jutland was a hollow victory for the Germans since the British continued to maintain a naval superiority, numerical superiority. Um, uh, yeah, the results, and, and let me tell you something. Okay, just a timeout here. The munitions story thing, I remember when I started to read about that, I was fucking cringing because I was in the artillery, and it's like you're circumventing safety measures. We're talking about explosive shit here. Oh my god! If some if some fucking officer had w was to come around and tell us, hey, we're gonna like circumvent these safety measures. Fuck that! Fuck that! I ain't doing it. None of us would have done it. Hell no. Uh, anyway, so so that wasn't part of the paper. Me going, fuck that! Fuck that! It's like quotation. Fuck that! Ref footnote reference. CHD 2018. Fuck that. <laughs> All right, so. <clears throat> Back to the paper. The the results of Jutland and other factors led to another change in, uh, in uh, to dominate German naval doctrine. The German Navy faced the hurdle of resources being diverted to the efforts of the German army. The Eastern Front versus Western Front philosophies that argued in the German army also had their proponents in the Navy, with some wanting the Navy to focus on Baltic operations against the Russians. I really cocked that sentence up, didn't I? Just had two days. This is what I'm talking about. Um, increasingly, there were people who saw the submarine as the best weapon against the superiority of the Royal Navy, including Ad Admiral Reinhard Scheer, who commanded the High Seas Fleet beginning in 1916. Early in the war, three British cruisers had been sunk in a single action by German U-boats. Uh, but German submarines were more tools of terror than a viable method to destroy the British Navy. Nevertheless, several high-ranking members of the German Navy endorsed the idea that unrestricted submarine warfare could lead to the war being over by the end of 1917. This strategy would fail, and its endorsement could be seen as scapegoating the Navy for the Army's failure to achieve broader success. So let's come over here to Izmir. 
Both Germany and Britain modified their naval tactics over the course of the war. However, neither side used the information they had at hand to fullest effect. Ultimately, the Germans never found a way to properly break the British blockade that was established in 1914. Their attempts to do so by using minefields, coastal raids, and trying to lure smaller portions of the British Grand Fleet into isolation failed. German U-boat operations failed to sing a single dreadnought during the entire war and were ultimately functioned more as and ultimately functioned more as a tool of terror than one of significant force. This meant that the British blockade would continue for the duration of the war and lead to the deaths of hundreds of thousands of Germans on the home front due to malnutrition. The End by Conscoring History Games. So that's the paper. Was that four pages? It's more like three and a half. <laughs> All right, so. Uh, we're still zigzagging through here. Uh, we got a few. There's still a few annoying divisions over here. You know what we gotta do? We're gonna stop zigzagging. We gotta take Izmir and we gotta take Rhodes. I'm gonna whip you guys back. All right. Oh, you made a citation. Nitro Games, nice. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Okay, we're having a little bit of trouble here. Uh-oh, wait a second, wait a second. Let's get you right here. That was very didactic. We try Didactic? Would you call me? My dad was a saint! <laughs> His answers helped me. I just got an 87 on my paper. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, and uh, and you know, Strachev, if you're really into, if you're interested in World War One, I'm not gonna say he's, you know, he he he's he's touch and go, and he's certainly not somebody who likes to deal in chronological order very much. But Hugh Strachan's pretty good. Uh, there you go. <sighs> All right. So, hmm, is this gonna become the? Is this going to become like how yesterday the thing of the day was uh, me playing the guitar and singing, and so what today it's going to become me reading uh, reading papers? We got more people watching today, which is which is nice because uh, I know I know it's hard in the middle of the week for people to uh, to watch, so I'm always happy when we get a decent number. All right, wealth of the Aston Quids Ravi. The Astan Quids Ravi is an autonomous charitable foundation based in Iran known as a Boyard. They look after estates repairing and refurbishing old temples and other buildings and even education, uh, educating orphan school children. They are a very popular and wealthy organization and even have influence inside our government. However, what we want to focus on is their vast amount of wealth. Seeing the effects of Black Monday on our citizens, the Astan Quids Ravi has agreed to give us some of their wealth to help deal with the problem. However, we have a second option. We could fully seize their wealth, giving us more money to work with for dealing with Black Monday. However, there is large support uh, for Astan Quids Ravi. Uh, so seizing their wealth will lose us a lot of support from their public. Uh, we can get more daily political power gain, or we can seize their wealth, which is going to temporarily hurt my stability, but I'll get more construction speed and some civilian factories. Ooh, that 100 political power, I think, is a little harsh. And Plus, I'd much rather have the political power gain. Um... <clears throat> Uh, what do I think about the Great War Channel and its hosting the Idel? I think it's great. Uh, I think that sort of content is exactly what YouTube should be for. Uh, let's see. <laughs> That's pretty funny, Nigel Game. All right, the deal is good enough. Okay. Um, it's still so bad. We got that weak economy. Uh, remove national spirit, fading phantom. All right, well, let's seize the wealth. Seize the wealth! Um, Sheikh Kazal is one of the wealthiest men in the Middle East. His ties to the British Empire and being the protector of Khuzestan and its oil fields for them in the past have made him wealthy beyond measure. With Black Monday upon us, we can use his wealth to recover and continue our next phase of recovery. Okay. So, we're still having trouble ending this freaking war. Whoa, what was that? Uh, thank you very much, Rodrigo Connolly. I got a lot of Irish people who, uh, who seem to donate to me. It's a beautiful country. Okay, Rodrigo Connolly. Are you also from Brazil? Is that real? 
<laughs> All right, the Ukrainian civil war begun. The Ukrainian civil war has. I don't know how they're still getting supplies. I'm going to be pissed if Egypt collapses. You better deal with that. So my funniest history quote that's not George Patton. Oh, oh, you know, I don't know. I'd have to think about it to like really, really think about my favorite. But this is the first one that comes to mind because we were just talking about World War I. Uh, it's by David Lloyd George. So he was uh, he was the British prime minister uh, during the second half of World War I. And he was the one who was present at the Paris peace negotiations. So he um, so he he uh, he was he was representing Great Britain while um, you know you had Woodrow Wilson representing the United States and Woodrow Wilson had just become this huge cult of personality figure because of his Wilsonian ideals and stuff and it was like this oh these beautiful things are gonna come out of the war and uh, oh, oh you guys want me to check the war okay Russia is fighting Germany really early actually and the Cindy's looks like they went to war with Canada looks like my prediction on the American Union state winning is gonna come true Anyway, so, so, you know, Wilson is trying to, you know, like, guys, national self-determination, bro, let's all get along, bro. And, uh, <laughs> obviously not like that, but, yeah, just being silly and facetious. But, and then Clemenceau is like, revenge, revenge. And so then David Lloyd George is, um, is getting, uh, he, he, he's getting interviewed after he comes back from the Paris peace talks. And he says, I did okay, considering I was seated between Jesus and Napoleon. <laughs> so I, I, I always got a, a kick out of that. Come on, no, we can't lose this. We cannot lose this port. Everything's gonna go to hell if we don't take this. Okay, matter executor. I don't know. Uh, I wasn't saying I supported or didn't support David Lloyd George. I was just saying that's a funny quote. So I think you might be the one who's the real C word around here. Uh, there we go. Hmm, let's go keep going west over here. How many divisions could they, like how much could they still have in the field? Got about a quarter of a million people. About to take this, finally get this last tile here. Uh, yeah, so for the quote again, <laughs> just because I, I might have been talking a little fast. So once again, the quote. Uh, oh, what is this? Victory in Dair Barkar. Uh, every unit leader gets additional. Oh, wow, is this just free bonuses? And they lose war support when I take it? Dang, that's powerful. Greece has capitulated to who? Oh, to the Austrians. Um, yeah, just <laughs> seated between Jesus and Napoleon. Good stuff. Well, you see, now these guys are getting supplies, but the ones down here should not be. So, ebb and flow, ebb and flow. Ebb and flow! Turks to spend my butterflies, yeah! Hmm... I'm trying to think of some other funny historical quotes. Okay, wait, no, so this is not a historical quote. This is just something I heard. So this woman was, this is, I heard this, I didn't speak to the woman personally, but this person, she was in Czechoslovakia doing research and um, she had a friend there and the friend was alive when um, when uh, the, the, the Soviets marched into Prague during the Cold War. And so like you have all these like Russian tanks run, running through and uh, um, what was it? How did it go? Oh yeah, yeah. So, so the Russian army is occupying Prague, and so um, this woman she goes up to one of the German, uh, one of the one of the Russian soldiers, and says, you know, she's trying to you know be nice, and says, uh, what did she say? Oh yeah, she goes, uh, oh you know, I wanted to say thank you so much for uh, for liberating our people during uh, World War II from uh, from the Nazis, and I'm very sorry about all the Russian soldiers that died liberating us. And then the Russian soldier just turns to her and goes, eh, there was a lot of us. <laughs> so that's like really funny to me. Hmm. How does a war have negative casualties? 
Was somebody born on the battlefield? I think that's how the plot of Wheel of Time began. Hmm. I guess negative casualties would be a positive thing, you know? <laughs> That's actually a scene I really like. It's kind of a comedy one, but it happens in uh, one of my favorite World War uh, War movies. It's called The Big Red One. It was written and directed by an actual veteran of uh, the, the 1st Infantry Division. No, they're about to take back Constantinople, and I'm going to get pissed! God. Why are they fighting so hard over here? They shouldn't have any supply left, and where are my allies? Dumb bastards. Uh. Hmm. Jeez, and like this Burke, you know, that, that Burke is covering everything, but just holy shit right here. Just, just holy shit. <laughs> That's... Oh, they went to war with 80 soldiers and came back with 81. Okay, I get it now. That's still kind of weird, but funny. Um, how far away are they from capitulating? We're going to have to take Izmir. How long have we even been at war? I haven't been paying attention. It's like when the war started. Shoot. This leader's wounded. She can't use her combat abilities. No, no, no! Wait, 168 days. Okay. Just, just hang on. Come down here. Come, come down here quickly. Oh, shoot. Uh, why would you type honestly at the beginning of a comment? Alright. Is everything else you type dishonest? Also, by the way, what time is it? Okay, I'm going to stream for another 40 minutes, everybody. And then, uh, then I got to go. I got to go help with... Uh, toy drive thing why can't they deal with this god they're worthless worthless hmm I think oh you know we're still on two speed no wonder everything's going so slowly all right just get down to Izmir Keep that organization, everyone! Took Antep. Yeah, if you, if you think the... Quickly! Conquering History Games needs your help! He, to, to capitulate the Ottomans, he's gonna need your credit card number, the three digits on the back, and an expiration date. All right, that should be it. No? Come on. Bursa. Oh, yeah. I forgot that important hub of Ottoman power, Bursa. What a joke. No, they're about to take Rhodes back, which is another problem. Ugh. <sighs> I can't imagine what my logistics look like right now. It must be terrible. Yeah, it's not so bad, actually. Okay, wealth of Sheikh Kazal. Uh, do we want him to give us wealth, or we can build more oil? How are we? Do I think we've got plenty of oil. Actually, it'll almost double it. That's pretty impressive. Uh, but it's going to lower our stability and war support, but that's not too bad. We can always get it back up again quickly. But 20% resource gain for everything is nice. Yeah, I like the resource gain for everything because it's it really it's steel we need more than anything. Hmm. All right. Uh, speaking of which, let's do some mining expansion. <sighs> let's just take it to five speed. Oh come on! Did you see that? Did you you all saw that right? get you over here that was gonna make me lose my mind up in here 
Okay, this one should be running out of organization. You see, that's the thing. They don't seem to be doing it. Guys, should we build refineries? Yeah, look at these two. They're just wiggling around. Have I ever lended somebody CDs? Uh, yeah, I suppose. Why? Let's see. Uh, Conquering History Games, what are your thoughts on Texas's constitutionally drawn plan to divide the state into five states if they choose to? Uh, I think, uh, I think Republicans these days would jizz their pants at the idea. <laughs> Texas is obviously very important to them. Hmm. Ah, very clever, Rodrigo Connolly. I was wondering if it was gonna lead into the CDs uh, nuts or the or the tape D's nuts. Got him. All right, so seven point nine zero real from him. Okay, Connolly, what do you want me to do? You want me to name an army after you? Do you want me to name a fleet after you? Choose your poison. Zen, 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 zen. Freaking stop struggling! Just give it up. I feel like that. Have you ever seen, you guys ever seen that angry announcer compilation video? I feel like that one who was like watching the high school game or whatever, and he's just come on in this fucking game when the field goal kicker mixes. It's just whoa! I don't think that guy's gonna was an announcer for very long after that footage was shot. Name something after Ross Common. Uh, I don't know. I'll have to. Maybe I can split this, uh, some armies off. Ross coming. These are the ones dealing with the European threat. Okay, here we go. They foolishly left their capital. This has to be it. I, I'm. I'm gonna go. Nuts. If am I gonna have to invade freaking Cyprus to get this win? Come on. Where's their cat I oh man, I think I actually am. I think I'm actually gonna have to take Cyprus. Oh Jesus Christ. Longest war ever. Alright, victory in Aleppo. Let's take that. Why don't we have victory in here? Okay, don't, we're not the ones who are permitted to take that. Let's integrate Herat while we're here. Um, can we go total mobilization? Would that be a smart idea? Probably not. Oh, we don't have the war support for it anyway. <sighs> Arabia takes Iraq. Uh, wait a sec. Okay, so it's over. The hostilities have ended. With the Sultanate of Egypt leading the peace negotiations with the Ottomans, Arabia. Okay, so so they, this is where things get tricky. I'm actually gonna make a, a, a save file, a save file. Um, okay, so while angering the Egyptians may not be in our best interest, the cracks in their alliance may prove enough for Egypt to abandon its ally in order to serve the peace. Oh, well, I don't want to pay political power, so yeah, we are gonna demand Iraq from Arabia. Uh, the Hellenics have capitulated. Gosh, my army is so friggin' small. It's, it's ridiculous. Here we go. The Roscommon Navy. All right, we got some free civilian factories now. Let's work on military matters first, I think. And how do we want to modify the government? There's not a whole lot we can do. Uh, motorized, mechanized, all this stuff is nice. Ooh, the artillery, I like that soft attack boost. Egypt backs Arabia. We can do tonight, we dine in 
Baghdad. Okay, hold on. We gotta we gotta get everybody over here. Is Kurdistan independent or not? I, I feel like they are. Uh, here's to a fellow history buff named an elite. Oh, thank you very much for the five dollars, Samuel Hogan. You know what that reminds me? I need to update the money chart. So Samuel Hogan, you want something named the Persian Tatars? You got it. Since I own Turkestan, you got it. Okay, so let me let me do something here real quick. I am going to update the donation goal since uh, we've been getting a bit coming in. <clears throat> What's going on? My computer's running a little slow here. Hmm. I'm gonna stop monitoring the Twitch chat. Nobody seems to be watching it. Uh, there's like three people watching it, but they're not commenting, so I just went ahead and closed it. All right, so we were at 97.18. Do a little bit of quick math here. Uh, so I gotta con do some conversions. Okay, because I got some euros. Uh, That's not right. Okay, 374. Okay, converting the euros. Now I need to convert the real. 790, that's so specific each time. Okay, so 790, 14, 14, 19, 19, 20, 20, 20, 20.80. Okay. So that's. 5.33 plus 5 plus 3.79. Carry the one, carry the other one. Okay. What's his currency exchanges with currency history games? Yeah. Uh, so. Where was I? Oh yeah, 14 plus this, the 97.18. That's another one. Carry, you gotta always carry that one, everybody. You got to carry it. Uh, da, 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 carry the other one. one da, da, da. Okay, if I did the math correctly, we are at 111 dollars and 30 cents towards the SSD. Okay, and it should be shown on there. Dang it, I just heard the chime. Who, who just donated? <laughs> After I already did the math. What country do I play to plan to play in Crusader Kings? Let's just say we'll be hanging out in this war area of the world again. Not a Catholic country, though. I'm, I've played way too much lately. We got a new subscriber. Awesome. All right, now we've got... Um, how long? Egypt's backing Arabia. We've got 11 days to get into position. Uh, Kurdistan is not part of the pact, I think. Okay, they're not, thank goodness. Uh, <clears throat> seven days, seven days. Okay, is everybody sort of in position? This is going to be tough. How many divisions do they got? They got 22, maybe, and then Egypt's got 15. <sighs> This one is gonna suck. Let's just try to get to the river line wherever we can. Alright, tonight we dine in Baghdad. Drop in the Sorry, I don't know why I did that. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna try to get a quick encirclement here of this one cavalry division. Hey, each one we take out counts, right? It right, looks like they're gonna abandon Kuwait. Or wait, no, that's not Kuwait. This is Kuwait. But we might be able to have an open path to Kuwait. Yeah, conquering peak box games. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Okay, 
Okay, we need... It's too early for the better engineers. Hmm. They don't need the anti-tank. Maybe recon companies could be good. Alright. Currency beatbox games. Conquering beatbox games. Something, something, something. All right, I guess let's keep working. We got enough steel for now. We don't need more oil at the moment. Oh, this will replace the weak economy though. I like that. If we could go in this direction. And we've already reasserted our claims. Good, 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 good. All right, the monarchy has been restored in Greece. Let's try to get over the Euphrates here. Come on, 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 come on. <clears throat> nice, okay, that worked. We're able to encircle at least a couple of them. Hmm. Yeah, it's pretty easy to win as Jabal in Arabia. Uh, you just need to know how to do it. Let's try to get over here, and maybe we could just run around like so. I don't see any Egyptian divisions, at least. Okay, delay is done. Why aren't we getting the research pop-up? Anyway, Elastic Defense is next. Maybe I should do a Jabal live stream sometime. I really like them. I like the United Emirates. Uh, they're they're the way they function much more. Hmm. Let's come over here. How's the casualty difference? It's going in my favor so far. We're gonna have to go all the way to Egypt though, which is gonna be the pain. There we go. Now we're open field running. We've got to take their uh, their docks though. Oh, but there's the they have their friendly docks. So actually, maybe we should prioritize taking Riyadh instead. So it'll move their capital. And let's have one of you head west. It's a big Egypt. Real big Egypt. Uh oh, this guy got cut off. Come on, you. Come on. Yep, looks like they're abandoning all Basra. Which uh, makes me very happy. Yeah, watch those wrist rockets. I know, I know. <laughs> oh, six. We got six cav divisions here. Oh man, hang in there, boys and girls. Okay, at least we've got more infantry equipment going. This is gonna be really tricky. Oh boy. Break through, bastards! Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. You guys, last stand. Just hang in there. Help is on the way. We're gonna lose that division, though. He's already dead. Okay, but if we could just capitulate the Saudis, it would be really fun. They're gonna cleanse! No! Have I watched the Clone Wars CHD? You know, I think I saw a couple seasons of it. But I'm not a huge Star Wars kind of guy. I kind of view it as the lowest common denominator. Uh, it's like the lowest common denominator sci-fi. I don't plan to catch the episode 9 either of, uh, of it. Of the new Star Wars trilogy they've been doing. 
Because I found out they were going back to Abrams, and it's like, fuck, you guys keep changing directors. Like, there's no unified vision here. Yes, they've capitulated. Okay, 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 okay. Um, now, you guys come here. What time is it? And let's have you guys... Oh, are they still there? That's kind of funny. Um, we're going to have... Let's do a naval invasion to really finish them off. And the two of you... Let's get up here. Did Egypt end up getting cores on all this, too? Yep. Yep, they did. Uh, fighting is still going on. Looks like... Yeah, the Pacific states are reaching that point where they run out of manpower, so it's just a matter of time now. I think the American Union state definitely has this. <clears throat> like I've heard the I've heard the Clone Wars series is good, uh, the animated one, and from what I saw, I liked it. I just uh, I just never got around to finishing it. That's it. Do I watch Tommy K or Feedback Gaming? Uh, I've seen a couple of Tommy K's videos. Um, he's funny. Actually, I think I have, you know, this is it's funny. Yesterday we were talking about, like, the differences between subscribers and viewers and how, like, I can regularly put out videos that I think get more views than Epic Mealtime does, even though they've got 7 million subscribers because you have people who just lost interest and they don't unsubscribe. But Tommy K is one of those guys like Horath Doc, Horath Drac, or Horath Drac, I think, that, um... I have more subscribers than him, but he gets tons more views. And I'm not complaining about that or anything. I'm just making an observation. In fact, like, let me let me go over here to my other monitor. Let me look up Tommy K. Uh, Tommy K. But it's also like I was saying earlier. I just oh, never mind. He's got more subscribers than me now. <laughs> it's okay. It has been a little while since I. Well, I just remember when I was, I once was watching a video of his, and it had like tens of thousands of views approaching a hundred thousand views and there was a lot of others that were like that and he had less subscribers than me and i thought that was really weird like why aren't people subscribing to him if so many people are watching him but nope he's got twenty five thousand now so he's got more than me uh wait hold on a sec a lot of guys are talking at once uh argentina okay yeah sure hold on a second Let's do the oil exploitation plan, and let's go check in on Argentina. This is Argentina's leader, Manuel Carles. Is that an apron? No, it's a dress. But there you have it. <clears throat> so, uh, where were we? Yeah, uh, only thing I'm going to say about feedback is I don't talk about feedback because he seems to be really unhealthily obsessed with me. So, I just don't want to encourage it. Like, he really, really hates me. And I'm just sort of indifferent to him. But he, uh... Yeah, he's, uh... He seems to be really into me. So, I'm just gonna... I just don't talk about him. Oh, come on! Get around... Oh, seriously? Wow. Just fuck this. Alright. Who's the best girl in the mod? That depends on how you define best girl. Uh, let me see here. Really? I don't I, I don't have the naval advantage out here? Oh, did I never actually... I didn't actually assign my navy. Wow. Um... I don't know. Let's see. The, the one who starts in the commune has a good design. Um... Of course, who else is gonna run? <laughs> There's only one person who could run Mongolia, right? Uh, but who else did I think has a good design? Uh, I think Jack Reed's is funny because they put the hat in there. Um, plus the red hair, so ha, red. Uh, look uh, look at Belarusa. Oh, she's got nice glasses. Uh, but, hmm. You know, you see, Samuel, you're misunderstanding. Like, I don't have beef with feedback. It's more like he, it's one way beef. <laughs> yeah. Notice! Notice Belarusa, senpai! Uh, check Hawaii. So are we now checking on what people say is the best girls? Jonah Kuhio Kalaniawa Ole. Let me make a save file here. 
Uh, <laughs> just real quick. Okay. So, uh, let's see. Who is the best? I'm trying to remember off the top of my head who I looked at and I thought, oh, that's a really good design. I like Zhang. I like this one with the, the uniform and stuff. And it's just really funny. It's like, she's just so happy. It's like, we're going to reunite China together. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Check the, uh, check the Philippines. Emilio Aguinaldo. Um, Pancho Villas is funny. Oh, they're not there though. Bukat has like has like the bandoleros. Uh, who else has a good design? Whoa, it's just it's not that is not a world leader uniform. It's a bikini with a collar and shoulder pads. Do I do multiplayers? No, they're just too much of a pain in the ass. Um, uh, anyway, who else? Who else had a good design? Germany's is nice. There's sabers in Sweden. Apparently, the um, person who did Sweden's portrait didn't know that that was saber. They just found it online and put it in there. Here's Illyria. Ah, see, this is kind of a more sketched-looking one. Uh, Papal States. <laughs> that is something. Is that a crescent? Hashtag not my pope. Uh, Julius the Fourth. There. Who do I remember? Let's see, we got Mysore down here. Yeah, we got all the princely states over here. Didn't I play with Mordred Viking? Yes, I've done co-op campaigns. I did one with Mordred Viking. That one was a lot of fun. I was the Commune of France, and he was the Union of Britain. Um, then there's... I did a co-op with Gurr, who's a... I don't think he has a YouTube channel. Uh, but he he's a, a subscriber and he moderates my discord and we did we did something that I think is actually not even possible anymore we did the um the the Irish American coalition that was really fun although I, in fact I want to play Ireland again sometime that's on my to-do list oh man are they gonna just let us run across the canal nope 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 all right, hold on. We got more requests. Let me check Albania. There's Albania, Chefquet Verlace, and Morocco. Oh, that one's not so great. Oh, whoa, that's weirdly drawn. Can we check Ukraine? Oh yeah, Cruz. This is Cruz. <laughs> Khrushchev with the corn and the gloves. I don't want to get the corn juices on my fingers. <laughs> okay, I'm only going for another 15 minutes, guys. I gotta go help with something. Um, let's see. We can send in the army. I don't think that's really needed, though. We're still integrating Herat. Mm, yeah, it looks like looks like we're not gonna make it here. Let's try to just get to Beirut then, and then up here near Halab, kind of near ancient Antioch, so we could uh, cut that off. You know, speaking, of, you know, seeing these guys, I went to this Mediterranean place yesterday. I was, uh, it was for somebody's birthday. Yeah, you got 15 minutes to donate. Although I will be streaming again later today. Uh, hopefully for at least a couple of hours. It, it kind of it's gonna kind of depend on um, how long these errands I have to do take. Uh, all right, go. Take out Bahrain now. I don't think there is a nap pop Iran option. Oh wait a minute! Can we not break through? I think the naval invasion penalty is too harsh. Dang, 70.7? Why is it that bad? That's totally unnecessary. Uh, you know what? We are going to send in the army. Does anybody have good essay topics about 18th, 17th century, or 18th and 19th century Europe? I just need 1.5% more to pass. Uh, I don't know what that means. But uh, exactly, uh, but hmm, good topics for 18th, 19th century Europe. 
Uh, Industrial Revolution would be the obvious choice, I think. You could do something like that. You could do the Napoleonic Wars. That does stretch over that time period from one century into another. But that doesn't really cover all of it. You know, the Napoleonic Wars end in 1815, but you could also talk about the repercussions. But if it just has to be something from that era, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe, baby. Oh no, he's gonna get the dock, he's gonna get the dock, he's gonna get the dock. No 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 You said it has to be Europe, right? Yeah, Europe. Okay. So like you can go into um like early America, the early republic. The Australasian guard is in charge down here. There's Eric Campbell. Seems very happy. I wouldn't do it on a single war. I wouldn't. I think that would be a bad idea. If you're supposed to cover two centuries, a single war would probably be a bad idea. And don't just always do war. Guys, history is more than fucking wars, alright? You know that, right? Hmm. You could talk about maybe the scramble for Africa. Colonization and stuff. Yeah, I'm going to be right back. Yeah, you can talk about more than wars. In fact, I'm going to try to come up with, uh... <laughs> Just, sorry, I'm laughing at what Connolly wrote. Um, but yeah, like, let me try to think of some non-war things you can write about. You can write about poverty in, uh, in, uh, 19th century Europe. What was that like? Uh, you could talk about the changing status of women, depending on different, which, you know, of course, went at different paces and meant different things in different countries. Uh, you could talk about, let's see, non-war stuff, the abolition of serfdom and how that went down. Was it effective? Did it do what it intended? You know, spirit of the law versus letter of the law, that kind of sort of thing. Um, you could talk about literature, uh, you know, like French authors and stuff, read like some Mary Gaskell or, uh, or, uh, uh, or Ladies Paradise. The AOG capitulated to who? Oh my. Things getting big. Yeah, the British abolition of slavery. How, how did that compare? You know, serfdom slash slavery, you could do about that. Um, imperialism. Like, not necessarily war. Of course, war can get into that, but just like, that, that's like the scramble for Africa sort of thing. I was saying socialist movements, nationalistic movements authoritarianism, uh, reform versus revolution. Like, do you think Bismarck was a social democrat just because he introduced healthcare? Yeah, positivism. You can talk about art. There's so much you can talk about that's not war. So try not to. If you get, no, do what you want. Do what you gotta do to get the grade, but I'm just saying. Uh, let's we got the lingering famine still, damn. Okay. It's 1939, we can keep working on this industry. How's the fight going? Uh, we're still horrifically outnumbered. Uh, we're just try I'm trying to get some encirclement somewhere. I'm really annoyed that they took back Beirut. But, and now they're gonna take this to base again. All right. <clears throat> Yeah, balance of power pre World War One. That's a good one. Concert of Europe. Yeah, there's so much you can talk about that's not war. Talk about architecture. Talk about cities. How Paris was planned. You know those big open railways? That's because they were getting sick of the. <laughs> that's because the people in charge were getting sick of the barricades, and it's hard to build a barricade when the streets like. A football field wide instead of a narrow alley. Hmm. 
constructions of national patent. Now, okay, now if he's doing AP European history, that might be starting to get a little bit too dense. If we're going to talk about like the, the the creation of uh, national mythologies, uh, but you you totally could, uh, but that might be a little bit too dense for a a, a, his, a high school class. Unification of Italy, yeah, well that gets into war. So like I'm trying to suggest things that are not war related, just to show like history is not war. So if you guys want to suggest war things, but still, all right, let me let me um, yeah, let me tack off off uh, on my fingers how many how many things I just listed, um. Yeah, redesigning the boulevards of Paris. That's what I was talking about. Yeah, like you make the boulevards really wide, and then it's hard to build a barricade. Um, so, so yeah, just off, the, off. The, uh, um, so, what have we got there? Uh, talking about poverty, abolishing serfdom, the role of women, uh, education expansion, uh, literature, popular culture, uh, 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 imperialism. Um, that's like seven things right there. There's plenty to talk about. It's an enormous, that's an enormous, uh, uh, you know, enormously broad area to study, set, you know, 18th and 19th century Europe. But yeah, you could, you could talk about the unification of Italy. That's, that's what you're thinking about right now. Let's see, I might have a book here that can help. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, because you have yeah, you can maybe talk about everybody who was jockeying for position. So you had the kingdom of Sardinia, the kingdom of uh, the two Sicilies, all the ones that fell. You know, Tuscany, Parma, Lombardy, Venetia. It's plenty to go off of. Oh come on! Still trying to take Beirut here. Let's see, I need to take this tile. Trying to cut off these ones. It's proving a little more difficult than I intended. All right, but this cavalry unit finally lost all of its organization. Excellent. What is this? Oh, cool, more divisions. To the front! To the front, to the front. Anyway, I think we've given him enough suggestions. It sounds like he has plenty to go off of. There we go. Got him now. Wait, 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 wait. Last stand. Okay. Still having a little bit of trouble trying to hold on to all these areas. Okay, but we got Beirut. We've got the naval bases. They're running out of organization. <clears throat> Oh, is the Kaiser? Oh, yeah, they they are gonna do that Kaiserreich dating novel, uh, the visual novel. I don't know where that is as, as far as production goes. I think they've already made all the different ideology people. I don't know if they've uh, what else they've done yet though. All right, we got that. Um, could go for no more focus on industry. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Modern agriculture is done. Okay, we're starting to deal with the famine a bit more. Uh, yeah, so we're going to get some consumer good factories back, but we'll get rid of fading famine, which is lowering my recruitable population factor and construction speed. But uh, So one of the things, for those of you who don't know about it, there is, um, there is a visual novel being created uh, for a Kaiserreich. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's like a visual novel where you date personifications of uh different kaiserreich ideologies so like authoritarian democracy and, and stuff like that uh and i thought it was so funny it's still funny to me i still get a chuckle they made the national populist a dude and the main character is a dude so that means the national po uh, populist like if you're somebody who believes in it and like you pick it based on that you need to uh you need to date a guy, and I don't see. I don't, I've not personally in my life met many uh, national populist type ideological thinkers who were not homophobic. Uh, so that is so funny to me. <laughs> like, no, I want to be nat. I want to go nat pop, but I'm not gay. Ree! <laughs> 
I'm not giving that a good read. Like a ray there. <laughs> uh, losers. Okay. Let's switch out the infantry equipment. Okay. Can't you choose your gender? Did they do that? Did they change that? I don't know. Last I heard, you couldn't change your gender in the game. Of course, if we want to start talking about, like, nationalists and homosexuality, like, believe me, there's contradictions all over the place. It could look a little bit into the SS, even. It's just... <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I think all the... And I think... I'm trying to remember what's the gender breakdown for everybody. I think that the radical socialists and totalists are both girls. Syndicalism is a guy. Um... Hmm... What what's the breakdown? Social conservative. She's a good Catholic girl, I think. Uh, I don't remember who else was there. Yeah, we're getting some good encirclements going here. We definitely outnumber them now. We've taken Alexandria. Where's their capital now? Uh, Social Democrat is a is a woman. Okay, yeah, because I don't I don't remember off the top of my head. Well, you know what? I'll just go to the Discord. I'll just go to the Discord and look. I think they got a breakdown somewhere. Uh, Idle Vice, that's what it's called. Okay, FAQs. Uh, okay, so the Nat Pop one is called Jose. I'm trying to they've got a picture somewhere oh they have a subreddit okay that's where the picture is idol idol vice and there we have it the sultanate of egypt has capitulated oh yeah it's all mine baby all mine Oh, I could liberate Jabal Shamar. No. <laughs> Only the thickest. Okay. So we're going to... Uh, let's see. We're gonna start the Idlevice. Is this it? Idlevice? No. Where's the dog on subreddit? <sighs> Getting really pissed now. I'm trying to find the picture. I just want pictures! FAQs. Let me look at their pinned messages. Do we have anything to work off of there? Actually, what time is it? Okay, I gotta I gotta stop today's stream here in a second. Um, okay, let me try this. Idlevice. Idlevice. Um, Kaiserreich. Just googling it. Uh, Idlevice, a Kaiserreich dating sim. More details in the comments. No. It's fucking pissing me off now. Okay, okay, okay. Here we go, here we go. I think I found a picture. Alright, well, so let's make a save since we got thick-ass Iran. Alright, so... Thick Iran, and then we'll pick this up sometime. I'm going to be streaming something else this afternoon, though. Okay, so I'm looking at it here. Here's the breakdown for Idlevice. It's, um, ignore the suggestions. They give me stupid ones. So, all right, it's Totalist is a woman. Syndicalist is a guy. Radical Socialist is a, is a woman. Uh, Social Democrat's a girl. Then Market Liberal. This is, I think, the concept of art they originally made for the main character. Social Liberal, Social Conservative, um, Authoritarian Democrat, Paternal Autocrat, Nat Pop. So there's three guys and seven girls? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. And I think, I'm trying to remember, I don't remember what all their ideologies are. I think the Radsock, she's a, uh, she's Welsh. I think it's Indian, Welsh. Uh, I think she's Austrian. I think he's, Ro he's Romanian. Yeah, the Nat Pop is Romanian. I don't remember anybody else off the top of my head, though. All right. <clears throat> oh, thank you very much, Rodrigo Conley. I didn't get the uh, alert in my ear. Uh, okay. So, 
Yeah, we've beaten we've beaten the the Cairo Pact also. You know, we were talking we were talking about important things like simulators, but but uh, you know, dating simulators of a uh, ideology thing, whatnot. Uh, yeah, that's really strange that there was no alert for Connolly. I don't know why. That's that happened yesterday too when somebody donated. There was one time the alert didn't go off. Uh, but thank you very much for the real. Obrigado, obrigado. Did that from Rodrigo. So yeah, I will see you guys hopefully later this afternoon if I don't get too busy. Uh, you all have yourselves a wonderful day, and thank you for the donations. I'll also update the donation fund uh, at that time. Bye.